Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. Today in the studio, I have a 2003 Ford F-250 with the 6.8 Triton V10 engine. This generation ranges from 1999 through 2007, but for our particular one, we have a 2003. I wanted to go over some of the top problems that you're gonna come to find with this engine. Now this V10 6.8 liter engine has a lot of horsepower, approximately 360, so that's quite a bit. It also has a lot of torque, so if you're hauling something behind you, like maybe a fifth wheel camper, you probably won't have any issue. A couple downfalls to that though is of course fuel economy. You've got 10 cylinders in this thing, and it requires premium fuel, so it's gonna kinda hit you in the wallet. Now the engine overall is extremely reliable. You really won't have too many problems with the engine, but there are a couple things that I wanna talk about, so let's get into it. Now the first problem that I want to talk about on this is spark plug ejection or spark plug blowout. This problem is going to be most common on the engines prior to 2002. After 2002, they figured out what was going on and they fixed it. This is a 2003, so this spark plug isn't really a good indicator of what's going to happen, but essentially if you were to look at this threaded area and then cut it in half, that's going to tell you about what the issue was. Now on the original spark plugs for these and the original aluminum heads, they really didn't have very much of a threaded area. The aluminum heads, of course, are a soft metal. These right here are a much harder metal. With the heat cycle of the engine essentially running and getting warm and then turning off and cooling down over and over and over, the metals are going to adhere to each other. So what you're probably going to find, whether it's while you're driving, you might actually hear something, or even when you try to remove the spark plugs to service them, you end up pulling out the threads of the aluminum heads. You can go ahead and pull out the spark plug and you're going to see a whole bunch of crud inside there and it's going to look like aluminum because it is. And if you did happen to find that while you were driving the truck, you heard a little pop noise, you found a little misfire, had a check engine light and lack of power, more than likely it's gonna be due to the fact that, like I said before, the lack of threading on here and the aluminum head made it so the spark plug vibrated around a little bit, popped out of with a cylinder head where it's supposed to be, and of course the compression's just evacuating the cylinder. So now, like I said, after 2002, Ford fixed the problem. So if you get something like that, you don't necessarily have to worry about this. But if you're looking at something prior to 2002, I wanna talk about it a little bit more. When you go to service these spark plugs, what you're probably gonna notice is you go to pull them out, you're gonna hear a little creak and almost a snap. And then next thing you know, it almost feels like there really isn't any pressure and you go ahead and pull out the spark plug and you've got the aluminum on the threads of the spark plug. At that point, you actually stripped out the threads inside the aluminum head. Now this fix isn't necessarily the hardest fixed, but it's a little bit difficult, especially for the rearward spark plugs, and that's gonna be the most common area that you're gonna find the issue. Essentially, what you have to do for this is go ahead and drill out that hole carefully. You're gonna put in a Healy coil set, or essentially almost like a re-threading set. What that's gonna do is it's gonna put in nice hard threads inside of that aluminum head for you. You go ahead and you put in a new spark plug, tighten it down, and make sure you torque it. You don't wanna over torque it, you don't wanna put a lot of pressure on it, because if you do, you could potentially cause even more damage. Assuming you went ahead and you re-threaded the hole and you put in the spark plug, like I said, just go ahead and torque it down. After that, you really shouldn't have any more problems. The second thing we're gonna talk about on these engines is the PCV valve hose. Your PCV valve is gonna be located on your passenger side valve cover. The hose is gonna go from that all the way up here to your intake system. Now what can happen with these PCV valve hoses is they tend to crack over time. And after they crack, they're of course gonna leak out the vapor that's supposed to be inside there. So what is a PCV valve? A PCV valve stands for Positive Crankcase Ventilation Valve. That's gonna be very important for your vehicle's emission system. So what does a PCV valve do? Essentially what it's supposed to do is vent the gases that are inside of your combustion engine. If you have worn piston rings, you're gonna have some blow by. That gas needs to go someplace. Other than that, as your engine heats up, the oil of course is gonna heat up as well, and that's gonna emit a little bit of vapor as well. All this vapor needs to go someplace though. They don't want to necessarily just vent that out into the atmosphere and contaminate mother nature. Of course, that's going to be a bad thing. So what did they do? They made a little valve right along here on your valve cap. So when you build up the gases inside of your crankcase here, it's going to be able to come up through here and then into your intake. At that point, the engine's vacuum is gonna draw it back into the engine so it can get burnt up again inside of your combustion chamber. This, of course, is gonna help with emissions, but it's gonna make the inside of the intake area dirty. So now we know where the PCV valve is and what it's supposed to do, but now let's go with the assumption that it's bad. What could possibly happen? Well, with the PCV valve, of course, like I said, it has the hose that comes up along here to the intake. What can happen is the hose that's behind this area right here can get dry rotted and cracked. If that happens, you're probably gonna hear a whistling noise, you might find a misfire, lack of power, and even you might get a check engine light that comes on on your dash. And that's mostly all gonna have to do with the fact that now it has a vacuum leak. 
Now for a fix for this, it's gonna be very easy. Essentially just replace from right here on the valve cover where your PCV valve is, all the way up to where it connects onto the intake. So now for our third problem, we're gonna move along to the sides of the truck. In this case, we're gonna be right inside the wheel well and you're gonna be able to find the manifolds. Now when we're talking about manifolds, what I'm really talking about for this particular issue comes down to the mounting hardware. In this case, the studs that hold the manifolds to the engine itself. Now with this, as you can tell just by looking at it, there the studs are extremely rotted and there's supposed to be some nuts on there as well that are, well, invisible essentially as you can tell. If you were to look very closely where the manifold right here connects onto the engine, you're going to be able to see some black soot around this one in particular. Any of that black soot that you see means that there's an exhaust leak in that area. Essentially what that means is that the hardware that's supposed to be holding the manifold to the engine, well, isn't really holding it the way that it should. And of course, all the pressure that's coming out of your combustion chamber that's supposed to be getting shot through that exhaust is kind of making its way out through that area in between the manifold and the engine. Now, when this happens, there's gonna be a couple different symptoms that you're probably gonna find. One might be the smell of exhaust while you're inside of your passenger compartment. That's gonna be very bad. You might experience headaches and even nausea. Aside from that, you might hear a ticking noise. When you hear a ticking noise, generally it's gonna be right after the initial start during like a cold start of some sort. So maybe you just got up in the morning, you start up your truck, you hear a little tick, 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 coming from around your wheel well area, and you're trying to figure out what that is. By the time you make your way all the way around, the engine warmed up a little bit, and maybe that ticking noise went away. So as you can imagine, it's gonna be very important to make sure that you don't have an exhaust leak at the manifold area. The reason for that is because like I said before, if you have exhaust fumes making their way into the passenger compartment, there's a possibility that you could get sick or even potentially worse. So let's talk about some fixes for this. Well, this one in particular isn't necessarily gonna be the easiest overall. Unfortunately, what you're gonna to have to do is remove all the existing studs that are inside of the engine. When you do that, of course, you're gonna to have to get the manifold out of the way. When that's out of the way, inspect it, make sure it's not cracked. When you try to remove these studs, you can imagine how hard that's gonna be. Typically, they're not necessarily gonna pull right out of the engine as they should. More than likely, they're gonna break off. If they break off and they're flush and level with the engine, you're gonna notice that there's an issue trying to get them out. And in that case, you're gonna to have to drill and tap. Now, when you drill and tap these things, you're gonna to wanna to be very careful because those studs don't necessarily go straight in. Sometimes they go out at a little bit of an angle. So if you're drilling straight and it's supposed to go like this, you could potentially drill into your coolant jacket, in which case you did a lot of damage to your engine. So be very careful if you're replacing these studs. Now, one thing about this problem in comparison to the other two that I gave you, this one in particular isn't necessarily gonna cause any runnability issues of your engine. So you can technically drive it down the road like this, but of course having an exhaust leak up ahead of the passenger compartment isn't something that you're gonna wanna do for a very long period of time. Okay friends, despite the three problems that we talked about, this is still a popular truck with a very powerful and reliable V10 6.8 liter engine. Maybe you have one of these engines with problems of its own, or maybe you have the same problems. Either way, if you wanna talk about it, leave it in the comments section below, cause I always love to hear from you. If you like the video, smash on the like button for me, you mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell. That way there you can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks.